Good morning, Jen Abra here with this video for you today. So this video is going to be a tad different than the other videos that I've been doing where I talk about um, spirituality, meditation, you know, energy, how the universe works, you know, all that kind of amazing stuff. Today is going to be a little bit different because I'm actually inspired to talk about something else that is very close to my heart, that personally happened to me, and that is, it has been shared in the news a lot lately. And I'm talking about depression and suicide awareness, and I don't normally like to take on, you know, these kind of topics, but I feel like if I can share my personal story with you guys, then that may help other people. Because, you know, it, there have been celebrities that, the thing that gets me is that celebrities are in the news for having depression and, you know, um, taking their, their lives into their own hands. And what I wanted, what I was thinking when I was seeing all this is that it's really sad. The, old, the other thing is that, you know, we don't really talk about regular people who are going through that and they don't get noticed in the news and nobody writes articles and goes crazy and makes billboards when a down to earth, uh, unfamous person has issues, mental illness and uh, depression. And so I'm going to share my story with you. I've never done that before. And so I feel like it's time. So it's part of the momness. It's part of my journey and I am grateful for it and I'm blessing it and it needs to be shared now. So I'm not a celebrity, but I feel like um, this needs to be talked about from a I don't want to say a regular person because that's not true. We're all equal. We're all important. We're all amazing beings that are here on this earth to do certain things and to raise the vibe of the planet and to share our stories. And so that's what I'm going to do. So on that note, I, as you know, I have four kids. They're older now. They are two boys, two girls, almost 17, 14, 12, and nine. I have to think about it <clears throat> for a second there because there's a lot of them. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> sorry, every time I, I tell a story, or I say my truth, my throat starts going crazy. So when the kids were younger, when I would say my second son was born, this was, um, about obviously 12 years ago, we had just moved to town. We didn't know anybody and I just had him and my three-year-old at the time, which is who is now almost 17. Can, can you believe that? And so I found myself after the second, having the birth of my second son, I found myself feeling a little bit weird. I found myself feeling really apathetic and not wanting to do anything and lethargic. And this child was a screamer. This child had colic. This child had reflux this child would vomit constantly the child would never sleep um and it was just a really difficult time obviously as a new mom of a second child having a toddler as well now thankfully my toddler at the time was you know very independent very self-sufficient and he's very he was amazing a three-year-old he knew he knew something was up even though i didn't he would actually get up at 5 a.m like toddlers do and make me coffee with the coffee pot. This is how intelligent that child was. <laughs> Still is. Um, and it took a few months. I can't remember how old he was to have um, someone say to me, uh, when was the last time you changed his diaper or his pull up? And I'm like, I don't know. It's like sagging and it's hanging down. And just literally he walked around and the thing fell off him because it was so full because I was so so not aware. I was so in my own head. I was so depressed and sad and grieving and just at a loss to know what to do because I felt like I was alone a lot. We had just moved to a new town, like I said, didn't have many friends. I was starting to make friends, which was awesome. My poor husband was gone all the time because he had to work two or three jobs to help us support us. And so I just felt like I was alone. I remember it feeling like it was really dark. Um, dark a lot even though the sun was obviously shining on most days but I remember just feeling dark and that was the energy around me of it being dark because I was in a in a really low state um, thoughts about you know you know I'm just here out by myself I have to take care of these kids and make dinner and you know 
the baby won't stop crying for hours. There was at one point where my son, my newborn, cried literally screamed for five hours straight. And <laughs> I put him on the bed um, and I walked away. Nothing happened, but I put him on the bed because I said, you know, I can't deal with the screaming anymore. I'm literally losing my mind and there's no one here to take this baby from me. And, sorry. <laughs> So I do remember that day very clearly. I do remember calling someone, a support that I knew from, I think the earlier center, and I said to her, I need help, what do I do? And luckily, I knew to call for help. You know, some people don't want to do that. Some moms are too ashamed that they can't do everything on by themselves. They're too, too ashamed to ask for help because they're, there is a stigma that moms should have their shit all together and that should they should be able to do everything and that they're super women and that's not the case. So <clears throat> luckily for me, I knew to call for help. And if I hadn't had those people say to me, you know, <clears throat> point this out to me, I would have had no idea that I was actually suffering from postpartum depression. So luckily, I was lucky. And it was very a very hard time. I was very depressed. I was very low. I didn't take care of myself. I didn't do my hair. I didn't care about the clothes I was wearing. I didn't care about the mess in the house. I didn't care about anything except getting through the day. So there were blips of having friends over, which were my light. They were my my light in the darkness. You know, people would come visit me and would hang out and starting to get new friends, starting to go places and making myself go out. But what I did was I ended up going to the doctor and I explained what was going on and she says, you have postpartum depression. And I said, I do. I didn't have this last time. She said, it doesn't matter. It can happen at any time. And so those were the steps that I took. I was lucky that I took steps to get help. I didn't not say anything. I didn't hide it. I, I didn't, you know, I just, I was, I was blessed enough to listen to my intuition and those people that were there to help me, my angels to tell me, you got to get some help. And so I did that. But the point of the story is I want you to know that if you are a mom of small children or even if you're not a mom of small children and you are feeling sad and depressed and you don't know what to do and you're having thoughts that are, you know, not good and maybe no one's noticing that you're going through this or maybe they are and you don't want to listen to them but I just want to share this story with you to let you know that you're not alone and to get help and to ask for help because we cannot do it all by ourselves. Nobody can do everything by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. You just can't. Um, uh, and I was one of the lucky ones. So my wish for you is that if you are feeling anything in this way that you get help and that you have a light in the darkness and that you are able to share your story once you are well again and to not be embarrassed and to not hide in your house like I did because <laughs> that does not help at all and um, so whoever's watching this I'm going to trust that this is something that you needed to hear and I am ready to tell my story and I guess I just did so all right bye